distinguished guest, our Pro Vice Chancellor, Dr. Partha Sharadi Malik, Registrar, Dr. Jay Bharati T, faculty colleagues, staff members, scholars, my dear students, and the representatives from press and media. Chandra in three. Chandrayaan-3 is the third mission in the Chandrayaan program, a series of lunar exploration missions developed by the Indian Space Research Organization, launched in July 2023. The mission consists of a lunar lander named Vikram and a lunar rover named Pragyan, similar to those launched in Chandrayaan-2 in 2019. The propulsion module carried the lander and the rover configuration to the lunar orbit in preparation for a powered descent by the lander. Chandrayaan-3 was launched from Satish Dhawan Space Center on 14 July 2023. The spacecraft entered the lunar orbit on 5th August and the lander touched down in the lunar south polar region on 23rd August at 12.32 UTC, that is 6.2 p.m. IST, making India the fourth country to successfully land on the moon and the first to do so near the lunar south pole. Let us watch a video on Chandrayaan's landing. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, plus one, Plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five seconds. It's a historic moment as far as India is concerned. We have started our journey to the moon. And the first leg of the journey has gone perfectly well. Five, four, three, two, one. We have ignition. Chandrayaan 2 that is the uh, orbiter is doing very well and all uh, satellite uh, operations are sorry payload operations are uh, uh, commenced and it is extremely doing well and uh, lander that is uh, that uh, we have got now no signal but orbiter is working very well. Five, four, three, two, one. Liftoff normal. Here tracking. we have a majestic liftoff of LVM-3M4 rocket carrying India's prestigious Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft. Chanda Mama, apne ghar ke. It's indeed a proud moment for all of us, and we have an eminent personality who had made all of us proud. Let, to know more about him, let's watch a video. Mr. S. Mohana Kumar is a graduate in mechanical engineering from College of Engineering, Trivandrum and took postgraduate degree in mechanical engineering from IIT Chennai. He joined Vikram Sarabhai Space Centre in 1986. From 1986 to 2007, he was working in the area of space ordnance systems and was responsible for the design and development of ordnance systems for launch vehicles. In 2007, he joined as core member in the study team on Human Space Flight Project and in 2017 he was designated as Project Director Critical Technologies for HSP responsible for the pre-project activities related to human space flight. He is presently holding the post of Project Director GSLV MK3 responsible for the realization of operational flights of LVM-3 vehicle and its human-related version called HLVM-3 for Gaganyan program. He was the mission director for the LVM-3 M3 OneWeb India 2 mission and the LVM-3 M4 Chandrayaan-3 mission. He is the recipient of 
आई एस और वो टीम एक्सेलेंस अवार्ड फॉर द सक्सेसफुल अकम्पलिशमेंट ऑफ इज फर्स्ट पैड अवार्ड टेस्ट ऑफ क्रू एस्केप सिस्टम मैंट फॉर एच एल वी एम थ्री अ नंबर ऑफ पेपर्स आर इन एस क्रेडिट इन द एरियाज ऑफ स्पेस ऑर्डिनेंस सिस्टम्स ह्यूमन रेटिंग एंड सर्टिफिकेशन ऑफ लॉन्च व्हीकल एंड लाइफ सपोर्ट सिस्टम फॉर ह्यूमन स्पेस फ्लाइट Thank you, sir, for being here. With due respect, I now invite sir to deliver his distinguished lecture on the title "Successful Landing of Chandrayaan-3." good afternoon to you all respected respected founder and chancellor of vellore institute of technology dr g vishwanathan vice presidents vice chancellor pro vice chancellor and registrar and other faculty members office bearers my dear students a very good afternoon to you all really i am very happy and privileged and honored to stand before this august audience as a representative from isro while the entire nation is celebrating the historic success of lvm3 m4 chandrayaan 3 mission in this occasion of glorious success of chandrayaan 3 mission i thank honorable prime minister and the union cabinet for identifying the importance of vigyan the study of uh, knowledge of uh, science and technology and its applications towards national growth and our journey towards vikasit bharat i thank my organization indian space research organization uh, organization and department of space for giving me the responsibility to lead a, the launch vehicle team to accomplish the launch of chandrayaan 3 successfully from our soil also i thank ministry of education aict the all india council for technical education for all the initiatives towards the holistic promotion of scientific activities really i have gone through today your uh, institute the entire campus the facilities the laboratories including your library i am overwhelmed really it is a wonderful and excellent facilities maintained uh, by this team and uh, i can see one thing all the students are very happy and enjoying the campus i think so uh, it is a wonderful experience uh, actually Uh, it took me to my own college days uh, that was the most beautiful days in my life uh, and which molded me uh, to handle such kind of uh, missions and uh, engineering tasks that is the uh, that is the uh, kind of education i also got from my uh, institute and as you are aware now coming to the chandrayaan the launch of lvm3 m4 vehicle on 14th of july 2023 had injected the chandrayaan 3 spacecraft precisely into the designated geo transfer orbit of 170 km by 36490 km and the rest of the events happened till safe and soft landing of chandrayaan 3 lander on the lunar surface on 23rd august 2023 are written in golden letters the chandrayaan 3 spacecraft as was told in the opening remarks essentially carries an orbiter which is a propulsion module and a lander and rover orbiter is the propulsion module which further takes the module from the point where we live the launch vehicle team leave the vehicle the spacecraft to the in the earth earth's geo transfer orbit to the lunar orbit the propulsion module carries certain payloads like shape the spectropolarimetric signatures of the habitable earth is monitored through this device the lander carries uh, two payloads basically the langmuir probe 
to measure the uh, uh, ion density, the plasma density of its uh, surface and the change of uh, electron density over time will be monitored and the chaste payload is measuring the thermophysical parameters of lunar surface and uh, it is having another probe called uh, a um, uh, temperature sensing device which will monitor the temperature variations and the rover carries uh, some equipments which will actually uh, derive data on the chemical and elemental composition of, uh, to for, uh, further enhance our knowledge on the lunar surface. And coming to LVM3 vehicle, it is the operational heavy lift launch vehicle of ISRO and has got a spectacular pedigree of seven successive successful missions. Chandrayaan-3 launch was the seventh successive mission of LVM-3, the first among them being the LVM-3X crew module atmospheric re-entry mission, wherein we tested the uh, uh, characteristics of the crew module uh, for its atmospheric re-entry in a suborbital flight. This was the first step towards our earnest efforts towards the achieving the ambitious human spaceflight program. Essentially, by design itself, the LVM-3 vehicle is a highly reliable and robust vehicle and it proved its versatility to undertake all kinds of missions, complex missions, like heaviest payload lifted off from our soil and multiple satellite, uh, satellites injected to the low Earth orbit, missions to geotransfer orbits and scientific missions like Chandrayaan-2 and Chandrayaan-3. Actually, we are in the continuous process of quality improvements payload augmentation and enhancement of launch frequency of LVM-3 vehicle, considering the national requirements as well as customer satellite requirements. The LVM-3 vehicle, the launch vehicle, in its variant called human rated launch vehicle, is identified for Gaganyan missions as well. The additional qualification tests, which are essentially to be carried out as part of certification to improve the reliability and redundancy of the vehicle, really added value to the uh, robustness and reliability of these vehicles. Actually, our strategy is to test the human-rated systems in operational flights itself so that we will get adequate confidence before actual human space flight in addition to the planned unmanned flights. In the current LVM-3 M4 vehicle which took Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft, also we had uh, incorporated certain aspects of human rating uh, in the propulsion stages, especially the S-200 solid stage the L110 core stage as well as in the C25 cryogenic stage. As you are aware, once the spend stage is, uh, has worked its performance, it has to be separated from the ongoing further vehicle for mass advantages. This system also incorporates special purpose solid motors meant for jettisoning of S200 uh, strap-on motors after its functioning. Similarly, L110 stage after its functioning. Uh, they are also uh, incorporated with a new device for its ignition, which is a quadruple redundant device, which is again meant to satisfies the human rating philosophy for Gaganyan. Actually, any one of, uh, out of four will function and uh, make sure the, essentially the function is attained. Actually, one more point I would like to highlight to you is that the, the launch vehicle missions are really a uh, very, uh, very involved task it, uh, it requires the contributions of so many people, our, our own scientists, engineers, uh, technicians, technical assistants, and our facility people. In addition to that, the, uh, uh, the, to accomplish the launches in the specified time frames uh, demanded by the nation, the supply of resources and hardware elements and subsystems are very important. Our industrial partners across the country contribute, a, play a key role in uh, timely delivery of quality products to us. This includes large-scale industries who make us solid motor segments, propellant tanks, engine components, vehicle structures, inter stages, so many large-scale industries to the smallest local fabricators who support us with contingent fabrication requirements. The industries uh, involved, not only the fabrication industries, but the suppliers of chemicals, propellants, chemical in ingredients, adhesives, sealants, rubber compounds, o-rings, the composite structures, so many uh, other subsystems are also being uh, developed and supplied by so many industries. 
This includes the service providers of avionics systems, avionics package assembly people, testing like that, uh, electronic people are also involved a lot. Also, we are, we are having certain GOCO facilities, it is called government, our own facilities, government owned com uh, facilities, but operated by industries. It is called government owned company operated facilities. These are also uh, are sub being supported by the industry people. So the, across the nation, so many industries are participating in our endeavor. Through the participation with ISRO, the industries are also getting benefited with better quality management systems and knowledge improvements, which in turn will improve the quality of other products which they produce and supply, including export. This is a great contribution of Indian Space Research Organization towards Make in India initiatives or uh, Atmanurbhar Bharat. A very robust review mechanism exists in ISRO. You may be thinking that how we, uh, uh, success after success, how we achieve. A very strong and robust review mechanism exists in ISRO. Start from the low, lowermost design review teams who review the from the conceptual stage to the through the preliminary uh, designs through the uh, critical design reviews every individual component going into the launch vehicle as well as the spacecraft undergoes a thorough review in different levels of review forums including um, uh, flight readiness reviews mission readiness reviews and higher management level reviews like chairman's review secretary's review like that also Wherever the management feels that some experts are need to be review uh, need to review the products, there will be eminent experts called from uh, industrial arena or from the institutes, academia, and our own repaired eminent experts will thoroughly review each and every subsystem went into this vehicle. This is the uh, this is the one of the major uh, strong uh, strong point of ISRO which ensures the ground safety, flight safety, as well as mission success of all our endeavors. And to the student com committee, I, I would like to highlight one point. Uh, our nation is having a very tremendous potential in terms of resources and opportunities. Through our space refor reforms as well, the union government has given a lot of opportunities to Every one of us, uh, as professional engineers and scientists, as startups for our producers of uh, space equipment, service providers of space applications, this is a good opportunity coming in front of you. Through your studies and efforts, improve your theoretical knowledge, visualization skills, analytical skills, modeling skills, and managerial capabilities, and grab the opportunities that are coming in front of you. In this regard, personally, I feel that one area we have to explore is, uh, you know, a lot of areas already people have explored and uh, made successes and uh, achieved a lot of things. Identify the gap areas in which, which are yet to be explored or attempted and find, uh, be the first one to grab the opportunity and succeed in your life. In this regard, personally, I feel that one area we are ready to explore is the manufacturing of a good capacity passenger aircraft. You know why I am telling this. Actually, from the data, the reliability point of view, out of one, per one billion kilometer of the travel by an aircraft, the fatality rate is 0 0.003. And compared to 0 0.274 railway and 2.574 road transport, so this is the kind of highest reliability points we have to achieve in an aircraft. This requires very thorough knowledge of materials, very thorough knowledge of vehicle engineering, structural engineering, aerodynamics, uh, electronics engineering, the control actuation systems and its control. So many, uh, so many areas. It is a very heavily loaded multidisciplinary project activity and if we are coming out with uh, excellence in this. One day we can succeed and from our soil, in our own aircraft, we can fly up and safely land back. Actually, this is one point I would like to drive to your minds. Please work on that if pos uh, possible. And to the institutes like Velour Institute of Technology or autonomous universities who are pursuing science and technology area, 
including a uh, all india a council for Te technical education aict I, uh, my humble request is that a curriculum built around the aircraft manufacturing te technology if it is evolved that would be nice because it require the expertise from all the areas whatever i told aerodynamics structural engineering manufacturing new materials development uh, avionic systems control actuation systems autonom uh, automated systems including life support systems for the uh, essential life support systems like uh, the pressurization of the cabin the carbon dioxide removal or oxygen supplementation emergency oxygen supplementation humidity removal so many things are there it is a multidisciplinary good task which we have to explore and uh, come out and uh, let these children all the boys and girls please think on this let god almighty enlighten your path and bless you all to become eminent personalities in your chosen area of work and become proud citizens of our motherland while we march towards vikasit bharat thank you jai hind thank you sir so we have few questions from our students so yeah uh you introduce yourself and you can ask your question good afternoon sir my name is yashi and as you mentioned about design and stuff how it was reviewed the question is around that um like chandrayaan is not designed to come back on earth so what will happen after the fuel is fuel fully utilized what will happen to the outer body of the yeah actually chandrayaan uh, spacecraft i as i told earlier the chandrayaan spacecraft is having three parts one is the orbiter or the propulsion module which still orbiting around the uh, around the moon then there is a lander which is coming out of the propulsion module and land safely and softly landed on the lunar surface and the rover which moves around the lunar surface and do the experiments propulsion module is capable of uh, more life actually in fact chandrayaan 2 propulsion module also still functioning normally still giving the data and this is working similar kind of life is there for the propulsion module whereas the lander and the rover they are powered by the battery which was charged through the solar panels you know that our 14 days earth days is one lunar day wherein the sunlight is available and it can we can get the continuous energy then afterwards 14 days it is deep dark and uh, and because of 14 days of continuous night the temperatures are also will fall down to very uh, very lower levels sub zero temperatures so we have to really see the uh, the capability of surviving these things after 14 days otherwise the orbital module will have long life thank you thank you yes introduce yourself with the branch yes. good afternoon sir i'm uh, megna and i'm studying uh, final year of bba in vit business school so my question is uh, considering the success of chandrayaan 3 when can we expect man on moon mission sir actually manned mission to moon is at present not uh, not planned however uh, as i told earlier the same vehicle the lvm3 is being human rated Uh, to carry human on board in place of satellite we will be carrying human on board in a crew module and service module kind of mechanism which will be placed in place of uh, uh, the launch vehicle and we are planning uh, low earth orbit fly autonomous flights of crew module in near future through using this vehicle itself and uh, you have seen at uh, the top part of the vehi uh, vehicle with a ojayu payload which protects the satellite uh, during the aerodynamic phase of the vehicle wherein in place of that uh, ojay payload fairing we will have a crew escape dedicated crew escape system so the, uh, one of the major tasks of uh, um, uh, making the vehicle human rated is to incorporate a facility or an equipment which will safeguard the crew's life any observation or any eventuality is there every second during the ascent phase of the flight so this crew escape system facilitates the crew escape of the crew in case any 
eventuality or any observation is there in the abnormal observation is there in the ongoing vehicle. Towards this, we are planning test vehicle flights. So this crew escape system also to be qualified for different flight regimes like high dynamic pressure or high Mach numbers. So this is being planned uh, now uh, in the coming months. And to, after that, we, will, uh, we are attempting uh, the human space flight, but not space, uh, at present manned flights to moon. Thank you, sir. Good evening, sir. So, the side. Yes, I'm feeling very proud to have a few words with you. So, yes, so my question is about the recent discoveries uh, of the Chandrayaan 3. So, recently we got information from the Pragyan rover that uh, extreme temperatures are observed usually like from the lunar surface and like just few centimeters below the lunar surface. So, um, can we get a few more insights about that, sir? Yeah, actually, uh, as I told, uh, there are, we are having the Chaste payload available in the, uh, in the uh, rover, uh, uh, in the lander, actually in the lander, Chaste payload, Chandra's surface uh, thermo uh, temperature uh, experimental payload. Uh, this monitors the temperature on the outer surface and it is having a probe which can, uh, which can go in, into, the, into the lunar surface. Uh, lunar surface uh, uh, and uh, it can monitor the temperatures. All the data we, are, we have collected after proper assessments, thorough reviews, it is being uh, displayed in our ISRO website, isro.gov.in. You can get the data uh, real time from this site. Yeah. One more payload is there, uh, which will, uh, 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 which is giving data on the uh, chemical as well as metal, uh, material properties of lunar surface. That data also is being derived. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. I'm Varshini from BBA department. So my question is to you is, India's uh, moon lander on the South Pole was a massive great achievement made by us, but at the same time Russia failed to do it. So how was this possible for us to do it, sir? Actually this is, uh, you know that we have also made uh, uh, one attempt earlier. Uh, we have, uh, I, I told again about the thorough review mechanism available here. Our instruments, even previous Chandrayaan 2 also was heavily instrumented. What we do is that like uh, uh, whenever an observation is there, we will go through the entire data generated as part of that mission and we find out what exactly went wrong. And there is a mechanism to find out that and we will make a corrective action. Before making the corrective action, we will simulate the failure itself and see that the, whatever our findings or our uh, interpretation prediction is correct. Then after uh, incorporating that modification, again we do lot of simulations. Uh, and uh, come out with appropriate uh, solutions or equipments or devices to safeguard them. This time also the al uh, algorithms were uh, uh, revised, n number of simulations carried out, the landing legs were ruggedized, so many modifications we have made and it was tested, n number of tests were carried out. With that we acquired confidence and went ahead with this mission. Sir, I'm Prakar Rai. Sir, uh, first of all, I'd like to extend my uh, heartfelt congratulations for the success of our mission. So my question to you is that uh, after creating such a big milestone in space, sir, when are we planning to uh, launch the next moon mission? And uh, like, are we making provisions to create payloads that can bring back samples from the uh, surface of the moon? You are, uh, you are asking about why can't we bring back the rover and lander? No sir, I am asking that uh, are we making provisions for the next moon missions to bring back samples from like the moon surface, like payloads? No, next, you are asking about a uh, next to future yes. missions? Yes. Definitely, uh, there is, uh, there is a thought process going on and uh, that also again, there are uh, certain decisions to be made by the higher management uh, 
uh, and uh, appropriate times this will be declared, if at all such kind of missions are repeated. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, sir. I am Tuhina from EC department. First of all, I would like to congratulate entire team ISRO for the successful landing of Chandrayaan-3. And uh, my question is, if Russia's mission of Luna 25 was successful, then the mission life of Luna 25 was entire one year. Whereas uh, the mission life of Chandrayaan-3 is only 14th Earth days. So why can't we extend the mission life and explore more about the South Pole of the Moon? Yeah, that, that I, I already have told, you know, you are, we are generating power from solar power available in lunar surface, wherein 14 days are our daytime, wherein we get the solar energy for continuously. Beyond that, uh, it is dark for another 14 days. At that time, we are not able to generate the power and uh, extreme temperatures also will be experienced by the module. So uh, definitely, uh, before the end of the lunar day, the equipments will be switched off. Then uh, we will see what, 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 what next is possible, best possible when uh, further power comes, we will see. But at present, we are planning the uh, lander and rover experiments for the, this limited time period. However, the propulsion module is having sufficient life. It will, it will also generate data, useful data will be available continuously. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, my question to you is that uh, uh, one of the things that impresses people around the world is uh, the cost effectiveness of our missions. So what factors go into making our mission so successful and yet so cost effective? Repeat the question, please. No, I heard actually. Uh, yeah, so should I repeat the question? Yeah. yeah. It is so only. Should, I re should I repeat the question? No, I, I, I got it. Okay, okay. Actually, uh, uh, first point is how we make it cost effective. Eh? No, this, uh, this because we are using all our indigenous efforts and indigenous resources. As well as we are planning the appropriate, uh, very minimal propulsion systems for achieving this goal. You know that ours is uh, a l lengthy process and... Uh, 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 sorry. Yeah. We welcome our Chancellor. Sir, uh, shall we wind up with the if you have any questions, they can ask. They can ask? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we have a few questions. Uh, just for a minute. Yeah, you can, sir, uh, please. Yeah. Sir. Uh, very good afternoon, sir. Uh, I am Monami Som Saha. I actually have always admired the work that the Indian Space Research Organization has done. And when I was pursuing my 11-12 journey, I did a very thorough research on ISRO's recruiting process. And I even uh, spoke to some of the scientists working at ISRO as to what I should continue as my coursework. And here I am at VIT pursuing, computer, uh, pursuing my bachelor's in computer science and engineering. So I... Just, uh, I will work in ISRO one day and I will be a par part of a team to inspire, uh, to inspire the youth of Good that thought. generation as ISRO has inspired me so much ever since I was a child. Sir, I just wanted to ask you, apart from my coursework, what would you suggest I should do so that I can achieve my aim in life? 
I understand that you are now undergraduate BTEC course. Yes, sir. I'm studying. pursuing my bachelor's. Actually, actually, we are having Indian Institute of uh, Science, Space Technology, IAST, yes, is having postgraduate course. Yes, sir. Including PhD course. PhD also is there. Okay. You can pursue your higher studies, uh, uh, your MTech and PhD in IAST. That is one option available. Okay. Again, through our gate or uh, 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 gate only, it is being uh, taken. Okay. Uh, that is one one route. And if you really pursue, want to pursue ISRO every year, ICRB. Sir, I want to, sir, yeah, ever since uh, I was a child. <laughs> uh, ICRB, uh, ISRO uh, combined recruitment board exams are coming every year. Okay. Uh, you can go through the ISRO website, uh, isro.gov.in. Okay. Notification will come time to time. Okay. Apply, excel in the entrance exams, and uh, excel in the exams, and welcome. <laughs> okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Big fan, sir. Thank you, sir. It's been very inspiring. Yeah. Let's have one last question. Yes? One last question. Uh, wishing you a very good afternoon, sir. I'm Keshav Shukla, a final year student of the Department of Automotive Engineering. My question is uh, regarding the NGLV, that is the next generation launch vehicle. So currently, sir, we are working on the LVM Mark III and it's planned to convert it to a human launch vehicle. But even now, we are using a technique of orbital raising. So will the NGLV give us the capability to directly launch in the orbit, say, in the lunar orbit or the Martian orbit? Actually, this, uh, this aspect is uh, well debated. Uh, really, this, all these things depend on the propulsion capability we have and it is a trade-off between the propulsion, propulsion stages capability as well as the spacecraft mass. So, uh, appropriately, we can, uh, appropriately through mission planning, we can decide on what is the propulsion capability we need to reach uh, the other planets' orbits directly. That can, we can work out the things. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. It was very informative yeah, session you. and very inspiring as well. So, we now breakfast our Honorable Chancellor, sir. Yeah, actually, I am also very much happy indeed uh, to see the overwhelming response of this institute, uh, including from uh, Chairman and Chancellor of this institute. Uh, I am really happy. And uh, really honored being here and I'm happy to see the uh, happiness and you are sharing the glory of Chandrayaan 3 success and your appreciation to the cause of science and technology in this nation also is to be well appreciated and uh, you are molding the children also in a very good manner. I can, uh, I can see, I have seen, uh, they know the purpose of their life, they know the purpose of their profession purpose of their studies, that way an overall growth of the children, you are taking care, all the very best, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> sir, I now request a chancellor and the dignitaries to join on the dais. So, Pro Vice Chancellor, sir, Registrar, ma'am, please join us on the dais, sir. Honor the guest with a shawl and a memento.
a memento for remembrance, sir. So we have the exhibits. So we have few exhibits from our students, sir, and also chocolate from our hot school.